Hello fellow chatterers. I was hoping to do this on the train um, but the final part of my journey was the carriage was so crowded I was like yes this is not going to happen. I was hoping that the time I was traveling it would be quite empty and there'd be an empty coach that I could just get away with doing a little video in but that wasn't the case. So I'm going to sum up my tea and tasting here. Um, I'm staying at Pimpin's house at the moment and I've just woken up um, and I thought I'd try and uh, catch you up with my tea and taste. So firstly, I have to uh, show you this fantastic thing that I got to keep my books in. So technically this isn't, this isn't mine, this is my eldest son's, but it was made um, by my fabulous mum who, um, if you saw one of my videos, I did a wee wrap up she made a little guest appearance and um, I decided to call her Natter to fit in with the brand of the channel so she's been getting incredibly creative with her sewing and this is just so cool so it's very exciting to use this um I didn't ask my eldest I just took it because I thought I need it more than you right now so the first book that I read was Pim Pim's Choice The Conductors and I just wanted to keep reading it. It was so good. That first chapter, I was intrigued. I was excited. So what I really love about this is, I didn't show you when I introduced it to you. We have some wanted posters. And I love that you're getting a sense of the story just from reading these. So it starts off with a wanted poster um, about two um, slaves that have run away and then five more and then it gets a little bit more intense and we get wanted dead or alive the reward money has improved improved <laughs> uh got bigger <laughs> um because these two um we then see that two of the names from the previous please return these slaves um are now like in the minds of the slave masters, hardened criminals, in the minds of everyone else, freedom fighters, and they are freeing slaves. And then you get a little excerpt about an amendment to the treaty on magic um, and what the rights of black people are with magic. So it is still massively um, oppressed, even though the slavery um, has been disbanded. In Philadelphia so you've kind of got that set up before you even start the story you've got a sense of who these two characters um, Hetty and um, Benjamin are and the kind of world they're living in and what they've got to deal with so then we move on to the chapter and what I really like and became apparent after I finished reading it is you've got these little star signals um, and also we've got the date. So this is how many years later? So it's five years after this new amendment was put up about what the slaves can do. Um, and I think Hetty ran away when she was 15 and Ben, well, Hetty escaped to freedom when she was 15 and Benji when he was 16. And then at the start of the chapter, you work out they are now 28 to 29. Um, so this first chapter, we get introduced to their characters and their relationship together um and we see them in their line of work and we see them um using magic and it's just so interesting it's really exciting and you get an idea of kind of what they're trying to do there's a sense of mystery there's a sense um i'm really fascinated by the magic so i don't quite haven't quite got a grasp on it yet but it's something to do with stars um, and I haven't worked out what it is, but it's really, really intriguing. I'm really excited for this book, <laughs> which is a good start. It would be rubbish if I read all of them. I was like, well, I don't really want to carry on reading any of them. That would be pretty pants. And not in a good way, pretty pants. So next I read Sula's Choice, which was A Women of Sea and Salt. Um, so for this one, the first little chapter is literally like three pages oh yeah and it's not listed as a content so we've got a contents page here and the first chapter is called dance not beyond the distant mountain which is a really cool name for a chapter um 
And then we have a map here, not a map, we have a family tree of um, different people that the book explores. So in the first chapter, we are in, well, the first little section, we are introduced to Carmen. Um, and that is set in 2018. Um, and that literally two pages. So that's not the first chapter, it was a prologue, like I said. So the, fir the first line of the first chapter is, um, that's, this is the dance not beyond the distant mountain. And this is Maria Isabel um, in 1866. And um, this is the first of the generations of women that are looked at in this book. At 6.30, when all the cigar rollers sat at their desks before the piles of leaves and the foreman rang the bell, Maria Isabel bent her head, traced a sign of the cross over her shoulders and took the first leaf in her hands. So this chapter is looking at um, what Maria's life is. She's the only woman working in a tobacco um, cigar factory, rolling cigars and getting paid for it. We get to hear about her mum and her relationship with her mum and what's happening. And Maria's kind of like feelings and thoughts for her future and the other kind of political climate surrounding it. I didn't read the whole chapter um, because the conductors was about 12 pages long and this chapter was really really long and I felt like that would be uh, quite a lot um, of time for, for just one book. So there were nice little pauses within the chapter so I read like the first one and this one in the conductors it was 12 pages so I read because I'd already read the pro prologue as well I then kind of like read 12 pages and there was a nice natural stopping point um, there anyway and again I'm really intrigued by the start of this I really, um, so the prologue, which was just the two bits, um, it kind of sets the tone of the book. We've got an air of mystery, what happened in the life of the person writing the letter, what's happening to her daughter that she's kind of writing it to. Um, or, or it could be like a, just a spoken feeling. It doesn't say it's a letter, but it feels like a letter. And, um, and then we get introduced to the first generation and her life and what's going on. And um, I felt very invested in her story and wanting to hear more about her and what she was going through. Something excited to see where it all goes. So then I read, this was Laurie and Sula's choice. This is kind of an epic love story. So following on from the, the sort of the, the humorous tone of this book, um, we do just get a very kind of clear contemporary voice um, of our main character and that he does that thing where you just automatically judge people and then kind of pick yourself up from judging them. It's like, hold on, don't be harsh. Um, but it, <laughs> the kind of like sarcastic tone and the kind of um, that the tone feels like it's sort of like eye rolling type of thing. And it, it did feel very funny to me. Um, I feel that there is a lot of kind of like, it's very kind of, because it's YA, it's very kind of teenage angst feeling. <laughs> so I think if you are not a fan of that, you will not enjoy this book. Um, so you have the, uh, the main character, uh, Nate is 16. And um, so we're sort of introduced to him. He's got a broken arm um, and... Yeah, there's a little revelation moment that isn't kind of explained about his reaction to another character that he comes across in here and then we go and see him meeting his best friend but that's complicated and then we see him going back to the family home his relationship with his mum and that's complicated so there's a lot of things that this book is going to be unpicking in terms of relationships and that excites me um, and and despite all of that kind of emotional heaviness um in terms of the, the character's kind of feelings towards it. it it feels very kind of normal teenage feelings um so it does kind of feel a little bit of a lighter tone to the other ones okay and pile's now getting in the way of the screen i'll just move you over there Where's, oh it's in the <laughs> couldn't, couldn't find the final one it's hidden in the back so then I read The Ship of Shadows and again there's a prologue in here. So I read the prologue and then I read the first chapter because it was just quite short. Um, so the prologue was intriguing and um, you get introduced to the main character and kind of her feelings and dreams and sort of the things that she gets up to. 
and then you kind of meet her amongst her family and amongst her peers and her relationship with her brothers and how she feels in this world um, so you really get a sense of where she's starting from and the kind of difficult things she's coming across in terms of her place in the world, what she wants, the feelings being different. So I'm really intrigued to like hear her story. I think it's going to be such a fun ride and adventure. Um, so yeah, all of these, oh, they all had such um, fantastic openings. Um, like I, I know I'm going to really enjoy, well, from the first chapter, I feel like I'm really going to enjoy reading all of them. Um, so it was very much, I decided very much on kind of like my mood at the time. Um, so as I'm filming this, I have, I haven't, my wrap up hasn't been posted yet, but I've read, um, a middle grade. I've just finished an adult fantasy. I'm in the middle of another adult fantasy. So um, all of that feels quite heavy. So the book that I kind of, that kind of just called out to my mood was the lighter. Oh no, was the lighter one, which is um, this is kind of an epic love story. It just feels more relaxing and less heavy than the others. I'm enjoying the the kind of um, the sarky tone of it. So this is a book that I continued reading on the train, and oh. As it stands at the moment, I have read this much, um, so I'm going to read a little bit more now. Um, we're going to be properly getting up and getting getting all our stuff together and heading off to the spa soon, where I will hopefully be able to relax and read a little bit more um, amongst chatting with all my girls and being generally relaxed. At the moment, my feet are very much protesting from all the walking I've been doing recently. So I cannot wait to soak them and just chill out. So I'm so excited to be going there. And this is what I'm going to be reading over the weekend. Um, so I will do another video at the spa um, talking about how I'm getting on with this book. Uh, but for now, thanks so much for watching and happy reading, everyone.